What's going on, everyone? In today's session, session, yeah, I said that right. Let's go over L'Hopital's rule, okay? So L'Hopital's rule is gonna be used to evaluate limits, right? We've seen this before. When the function f of x approaches some value zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right? As your x approaches some value a. And so we've seen limits before and it looked like this, right? So we asked you to evaluate the limit as x approaches, let's say two, right? Of this function, x squared plus x minus six, all that divided by x minus two, okay? And we said that when you're given this, so you, in this case, you definitely do not want to just plug in x is equal to two, right, into your function, because we said when you plug that into the bottom, two minus two is zero, right, and anything, in this case, um, I'm gonna generalize it into an a for anything, divided by zero is going to blow up, right? We said that that function is gonna blow up and it's going to approach some very large number that we call infinity. And so we didn't wanna do that in that case. We said that instead, we wanted to take a step back for a second before we dive in and look at what we can factor. And we said that the top, a lot of times, right, could be factored. So let's rewrite this as the limit of x approaches two, this top part can be factored into x minus two times the quantity x plus three, right? Because x times x is x squared plus x times three, which is three x, minus two times x, which is two x. So three x minus two x is positive one x, right? And then negative two, times positive three is negative six. And so we can factor it this way. And once you rewrite this, right, you see that x minus two is the top and the bottom. So we canceled those out and you were left to evaluate, right, x plus three at x is equal to two essentially. So all you do is plug that in and you got five, right? So this is what we did before. And so for today, we're going to consider functions that look like this, right? So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a general one. So the limit as x approaches some value a, right? As x approaches some value a of this function. So of some expression, right? Divided by some other expression, okay? So let's consider f of x to be one polynomial divided by g of x, which represents another polynomial, right? And we say if you were to just plug in, right, a wherever you see x in the numerator and wherever you see x in the denominator and that comes out to zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right, then you would apply L'Hopital's rule. So L dash H stands for L'Hopital's rule, and I'll write that here. And all this means is you're going to evaluate, right, same thing, the limit as x approaches that same value a, but instead of evaluating the numerator expression, right, and the denominator expression, you're gonna do that with the derivative of the top, right, and the derivative of the bottom separately. So that's gonna look like this. The derivative with respect to x of f of x on top divided by the derivative with respect to g of x at the bottom, okay? And so in order to kind of highlight this, right, in terms of this is kind of one of the, the key takeaways, right, the, the utilities of L'Hopital rule, so let's learn about this by doing an example, okay? So let's say I want you to evaluate the limit as x approaches two of this function, x minus two on top divided by x 
squared minus 4. Okay? So if I gave you this and I just told you in general to evaluate, right? To evaluate that. Okay? So naturally what you're going to do is you're going to look at this, right? And you're going to say, okay, is there anything I can factor out? Okay? The obvious step would be to look at, if I were to plug in x is equal to 2 to the top and to the bottom, right? I would get 2 minus 2 over 2 squared, which is 4 minus 4. In this case, I'm going to get 0 over 0. This is a telltale sign to use L'Hopital's rule, right? Because we said that whenever you get a numerator over a denominator, and if it turns out to be 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, you know to use L'Hopital's rule. So now that we have this, let's rewrite our limit, right? As the limit of x approaches, sorry about that, 2, right? Getting it from here. Let's take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately, both with respect to x. So we're going to have d over dx of the top, x minus 2, divided by the derivative of the bottom, d over dx, x squared minus 4. Okay, so let's solve these out, and we already know that you're going to distribute the derivative, right, to each part of the expression. And that's going to look like this, the limit as x approaches 2 of the derivative of this is going to be 1, right? Because the derivative of x is 1 minus the derivative of 2 is the derivative of a constant, a number, which just turns out to be 0, okay? So this turns out to be 1 minus 0, which is just 1. I'll write that. Over the derivative of x squared, which is just 2x, right? Minus the derivative of another constant, 4, which is 0. So now you have this limit as x approaches 2 of 1 over 2x. Now you can take your x is equal to 2 and plug that in. So now you have 1 over 2 times 2, which is just 4. Okay? And this is your final answer. Okay? So this was an example that we did for a zero over zero case, let's do an example of the infinity case. So I'm gonna give you a new problem, okay? So, and then um, I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and pause it and work on it, and then we'll work on the solutions together, okay? So the limit as x approaches infinity this time, right? Infinity is just the concept of a very large, in this case, positive, number of this function, 2x plus 7 divided by 3x squared minus 5, all right? So go ahead and evaluate this function, pause the video, and then when you're ready, we'll work on it together. Sweet. So let's see if our answers match up, okay? So the first thing that you're going to think of, right, is that it doesn't look like you're gonna factor anything. So a logical first step, again, is going to be just to take your x essentially is equal to infinity, right? As x approaches infinity, you're just gonna take infinity and put it in wherever you see x. So in this case, this is two times a super large number plus seven. And we said before that infinity is a number that's so large, right, that it pretty much dominates the terms um, that it's included in. So in this case, two times a super large number is just gonna be a super large number, right? And the seven is gonna be pretty much negligible, all right? Same thing at the bottom, three x squared. Now you're taking this really large number, you're squaring it, you're multiplying it by itself, and then you're multiplying it by three. So three 
times infinity squared is also another super large number, right? And so the fact that you subtract five from a super large number is not gonna make much of a difference. So in this case, what we're saying is that 2x and 3x squared are going to be the dominant terms in the numerator and the denominator. And so we're really going to rewrite our limit, right, to include those terms because those are essentially the only terms that are going to matter in our analysis. So now we have this, okay? And so, actually, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. So let's just keep it there for now, okay? So just know that these terms are the dominant terms. Now, let's plug in our x is equal to infinity, right, essentially. And so when you do that, you're going to get some really large number divided by some other really large number, right? So in this case, again, the infinity over infinity is going to be a telltale sign that you need to use your L'Hopital's rule, right? Because you've got infinity over infinity this time. And that's gonna be just taking the derivative, right? Keeping the limit the same as x approaches infinity. And for the numerator, take the derivative with respect to x of two x plus seven, okay, we're just gonna include the whole thing here, divided by the derivative with respect to x of the entire denominator, minus five. So let's evaluate the top and the bottom derivatives, and we know that we need to distribute our derivative terms, right, into each of the, each value in the expression. So the limit is still the same as x approaches positive infinity. Derivative of this is just gonna be two, right? Because the derivative of two x is just two, derivative of the constant is zero. So this is just gonna be two over, or two plus zero, just for completion, divided by derivative of three x squared is six x. Again, the derivative of five constant is zero, so minus zero. Now you have the limit as x approaches infinity of two over, 6x. So we can simplify this like so, 1 over 3x. Now you can take your value for x, plug it in, right? Now let's think about this. 1 divided by a super large number, right, is going to end up approaching 0. And the way we talked about this before, right, is because think of you having one cake, okay? So you have one cake, and you're going to try to cut this thing up into an infinite amount of pieces. And so once you get to a certain number of pieces, right, infinity, infinite pieces, each piece is essentially going to be non-existent, right? It's going to be less than a crumb. So that's going to be zero. Okay, and that's how we get this one. So um, that's basically it for L'Hopital's rule. It's pretty simple, right? You're gonna evaluate your original limit that you're given, right? Something like this. Um, and if you plug in your x is equal to a into the top and the bottom, and you end up getting zero over zero or infinity over infinity, right? In your initial step, then you're gonna know to use L'Hopital's rule. At that point, this original function that you're evaluating, right? You're gonna modify it to this one where you're still taking the same limit as x approaches a, right? Limit as x approaches a, but you're gonna be evaluating this for the derivative of the top, right? ddx of f of x of this function. And then at the bottom is the ddx of g of x, which is just this function. And we were able to highlight that um, through these examples. Okay, so um, if you understood that, good job. If you are still having problems, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and go back and look at the parts that you need. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, this was L'Hopital's rule.
for evaluating limits, right? Where your initial function is zero over zero or infinity over infinity. 